We've all heard the rumors that the PS5 Pro is launching by the end of the year, but did you guys know that there's also a new Xbox launching this year too? So here's everything we know about it. Oh, and there's more than just the new Xbox Series X coming this year, but I want to start off with this Series X first. Back in September, when the big FTC versus Microsoft trial was going on, some of Microsoft's internal documents got leaked. And they not only revealed Microsoft's plans for the future of the Xbox, but also full-on images and specific details of what their next hardware will be like. According to these documents, Microsoft will be releasing a new Xbox Series X at the end of the year. Codenamed Brooklyn, the new Series X seems to have a completely new design, one that is now a cylinder shape as opposed to the old boxy design that the original Series X had. And I guess that such a design does make sense if you think about the internals. The original Series X sucked in air from the bottom and blew it out from the top thanks to a pretty beefy fan. It was a smart and efficient approach that kept temperatures cool and fan noise low. And it seems like Microsoft wants to continue this thermal design approach with a new Series X. But okay, what's actually new? Well, if we take a look at the outer design, we can immediately see that the disk drive is gone. Yes, this new Series X will be an entirely digital console. And I'm personally okay with that. Like, I haven't bought a single disk-based game since this current generation of consoles has launched. Like, I know that some people do prefer having a disk drive, as they can then get games cheaper, plus also trade them in later. But personally, I just like the convenience of not having to wait for my game to be delivered and then have to change discs every single time I want to play a different game. Instead, I just buy those games, and in a matter of minutes, I can already play them and switch between them as fast as I want. It could be the case that we also get an external disk drive, like Sony has done with the new PS5 Slim. Although, this isn't quite clear yet from Microsoft's documents. Now, aside from the removed disk drive, we can also see that we are now getting a USB-C port on the front instead of the old USB-A. There was no mention of the ports on the back, so in our concept, we just have them as they are now on the current Series X. Although, personally, I do expect us to get some USB-Cs on the back too, if not even only USB-Cs. Now, based on Microsoft's leaked documents, we are also getting double the internal storage. Now, up to 2TB, as well as Wi-Fi 6E up from Wi-Fi 5, which is actually a really big upgrade in itself. Wi-Fi 5 usually gives you speeds of around 100 to 600 megabits per second in real-world scenarios, whereas with Wi-Fi 6E, you can get anything between 500 to even 2 gigabits per second as long as you have a Wi-Fi 6 enabled router, of course, and also a high-speed internet connection. And in that case, your games will download much faster on this new Xbox. Now, there are a couple of more changes here, such as the addition of Bluetooth 5.2. Currently, there is no official Bluetooth support natively, so you cannot just use any Bluetooth headphones that you want. This will, of course, no longer be the case with a new version. On top of this, the PSU is apparently going to be 15% smaller with 20% less energy consumption when in standby mode. Okay, all of this sounds cool, but what about the actual performance? After all, the PS5 Pro is said to be a significant leap over the PS5, so what about this new Xbox Series X? Well, unfortunately, the only performance change seems to be a die shrink from 7 nanometers down to 6, which is also what helps bring down the energy consumption, but other than this, it doesn't seem like we are getting any performance changes at all here. So, if anything, this is more of an Xbox Series X Slim rather than an Xbox Series X Pro. On one hand, this is a bit disappointing, considering that Sony is introducing the Pro version of the PS5 soon. But on the other hand, the Xbox Series X was already more powerful than the PS5, and you are also getting more storage now for what will apparently be the same $499 price point. Which brings us to the new Xbox Series S that is apparently getting updated as well this year. This is what it looks like, very similar to the current version, only with a USB-C port on the front. Other changes seem to include more storage, up to 1TB now, as well as Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2. Now, if you guys remember, back in September of 2023, Microsoft did launch a black version of the Series S with 1TB of storage, rather than 512, for $350 rather than 300 This new version will be sold for 300 according to Microsoft's documents, which makes me think that we might see the black version getting updated to 2TB now. So far, both of these console upgrades seem quite underwhelming, as we're not really getting anything extra that would make a significant impact to our gaming experience. But this is not entirely true, as I did intentionally leave the best for the last. 
You see, both of these new Xboxes will apparently come with a brand new controller, codenamed Sibyl. And this is honestly the most exciting upgrade by far, as you're essentially getting two big changes. The first one being one that everyone has been asking for the most, and that is haptics. Yes, apparently this new controller will finally include haptics, something that was such a big miss on the current controller. Like, there were so many occasions when I wanted to play a game on my Xbox because I either had it on Game Pass or it simply ran better, but I ended up just playing it on my PS5 instead because of its controller haptics. Microsoft is calling this precision haptic feedback that can also double as speakers. Now, this is very interesting. I doubt that they'll be as good as the DualSense's actual speakers, but I'm definitely curious to see how these would work in games as not just haptics, but speakers too. Oh, and fun fact, Sony's haptics are also capable of reproducing sounds, it's just that Sony uses its actual speaker for that. Which brings me to the second upgrade of this controller, which is by far the biggest one, and that is a direct-to-cloud connection. So, on top of supporting Bluetooth 5.2 and a new Xbox Wireless 2 protocol for likely an even lower latency, this new controller will be able to directly connect to your Wi-Fi network and therefore directly connect to Microsoft servers for when you're streaming Game Pass games. And this is huge! What this means is that when you stream an Xbox Game Pass game on, let's say, your TV, it will not only have a much lower input latency, since the controller is directly connected to Microsoft servers, but you'll also be able to seamlessly switch between streaming on your TV to streaming on your phone or your tablet. Just like that. Google actually pioneered this first with a Stadia controller, and it was a truly brilliant idea. This simply shows that Microsoft is committed to both physical consoles with these new Xbox updates, as well as game streaming as well, essentially giving you the best gaming experience no matter what platform you choose to play your games on. Now, aside from these two big new controller features, haptics and direct-to-cloud connection, there are a number of other smaller ones that are also worth mentioning. For example, there's apparently going to be an accelerometer now that will allow the Xbox to wake up as soon as you lift the controller, just like Sony's DualSense. The buttons and thumbsticks will now be quieter, which I did actually find to be an issue on the current Xbox controller, they were way too loud, and then the thumbsticks will now be modular as well. It's not quite clear yet if by modular they mean that you'll be able to replace the top like you can with the Xbox Elite Series 2 controller, or that you'll be able to replace the entire stick mechanism like you can with Sony's DualSense Edge. And yes, you will be able to use both replaceable as well as rechargeable batteries. Now, all of that sounds great, but you know what's even better? Some truly high-quality 8K wallpapers for all of your devices. In an app that offers cross-platform cloud sync so that you can take your favorite wallpaper collection with you, with a beautiful and simple to navigate UI. One that comes with frosted glass and haptic feedback and with dozens of talented creators from all around the world designing some truly amazing art. All of that and more is present in our app, Wallpapers. But probably the most unique thing about it is that we take all of your feedback to constantly make wallpapers better and better. So if you want to support our work and also get some truly stunning wallpapers, you can check out Wallpapers on the App Store and the Play Store today. Okay, now back to this new controller. All in all, it does seem to be the main upgrade of the year for Xbox. And I'm truly glad to see Microsoft give it some attention too. Oh, and that very same document, a new Elite controller was also mentioned, which may arrive at the same time as this new base controller. So yeah, there are definitely a lot of things that have been leaked in these official documents. Now, Phil Spencer has released some comments verifying the legitimacy of the documents, as well as stating that they were old, and so much has changed since. However, in mid-February of this year, Phil Spencer said that he was proud of the work that a hardware team was doing, not only for this year, but also for the future. Essentially confirming that we will be getting some new hardware this year after all. Plus, we've had some recent leaks suggesting a 2024 release still, one as early as June or July for this new hardware. Now, of course, there's so much more to discuss. There were mentions about the next-gen Xbox made by Xbox president Sarah Bond as well as references to a handheld and so much more, which I'll be covering in a future video. You subscribe to the channel and leave a like if you have enjoyed this one, as it does help YouTube's algorithm, and stay tuned for more Leaks and Rumors episodes. I'm Daniel, this is Zone of Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zone of Tech, signing out. Cheers.